Hi, Leonard. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. I'm excited yeah. to see you. I'm excited too. <laughs> I have all of this adrenaline from setting all of this up and then talking to another human. So <laughs> I know, right? We're not used to anything anymore, but uh, here we are. Yeah, thanks for making the time. Thanks for getting up early. I love your backdrop, truly. Oh. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of the series that you entered for uh, Foam Talent 2021. Uh, it's called Quarantine Blues and consists of a series of um, staged uh, images in your house, in your home, uh, featuring you, featuring your friends, featuring your loved ones. So it seems like, you know, the, the past year and the pandemic and, uh, uh, you know, the quarantine had, ha has had a really direct effect on your work and on your working method. I think the pandemic really create an opportunity for me to reflect on all of these confusing things in my life. And I found out that I've just been living in isolation uh, prior to the pandemic. You know, like being queer in Indonesia, growing up Chinese Indonesian, and then moving to America, you know, all of these confusing things are just holding me back. And with the pandemic, being able to almost like reset, it really kind of gives me like a new set of perspective. And I don't know, I, I love working at home. <laughs> I love making uh, humble everyday objects and people look fantastical. So whatever I can keep doing in my life so that I can spend my energy in the world doing that, I want to keep doing that, even if I'm just at home. <laughs> There's a sense of community in the images. You're bringing together, you know, people that you go to the gym with or, you know, your partner or your friends. But I can imagine you, you had to completely compose this community in the image, right? Or were you physically in the same space together? So, for example, that photograph at the gym, we went through a long period of uh, chatting online. So we would have like online hangouts, online uh, information session, because I want to be able to share with them what we're doing. I need to share it with them like, this is, this is what I'm hoping to do. I hope you would. Uh, participate. There are protocols uh, in place as far as COVID, you know, not more than 10 people in, in the class or in the gym. Uh, people need to be six feet away except for partners and roommates or close friends. So prior to taking that photo, we just had this weekly online hangouts to kind of go through what we want to do. I asked them what they want to bring. I asked them how their experience was. Maddie told me like, we go through Cheerios like no other <laughs> in quarantine. That is a great photo. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pose you with Cheerios. So, you know, like things like that just come about and in a spontaneous way, and when it comes about, like, I'm going to pursue it, you know, because like, what else am I going to do? I'm, I'm already at home doing nothing, you know? So like, whatever simple inspiration comes, I'm going to run with it. Yeah, you can really see how you've in a very confined space, you're really trying to create, you know, new fantastical worlds. We see you, you know obsessively creating, or if, I think it might be a friend of you, obsessively creating, you know, mouth, face masks, uh, ironing them. You know, we see people exercising in the living room. We see uh, sort of uh, the results of a sort of hoarding behavior uh, happening. Uh, uh -huh. Then I think, <laughs> you know, the empty shelves in the supermarket uh, testified to this sort of human tendency to prepare for the worst. Um, but yet all of this, it's sort of almost obsessive, um, but all of this in a very cheerful aesthetic, right? So there's, there's a duality there, I feel, between on the one hand feeling 
fear um, uh, and obsessive compulsive tendencies. And on the other hand, you know, celebrating, you know, the freedom that you have at home to express yourself. Is that yeah. how you also experienced the past year? Pretty much, you know, like uh, in the pandemic, what came to me was Gursky image of the 99 cent store. And I was like, well, no one's going to give me that permission, but why can't I just do it with my own trash? You know, so like I started piling up my soda cans like in the photos and then my uh, recyclable containers. And I just try to attempt to make it how I want it. And yeah, I think the camera is such a great it's right here. Mm -hmm. The camera is such a great medium for all of my thoughts, my questions, my confusions, because what's so great about working with this camera is that like I set it up and then it's basically, I write the story. I love using this camera just because like, I am such a nerd for like a <laughs> camera, you know, it's just like, I still love the manual process of the film camera that it allows me to basically do what I want with that technology and kind of push it uh, to see what today's technology can make better with, with that process. So that's why in my work, I use this camera, but I still use like flashes and everything. So like studio flashes, I use digital editing and scanning to make everything come together. And I don't know, I also make work to be printed larger than a computer screen. So I think, I think when it's all condensed down and compressed into the phone or computer or printed in a book, it may feel like it's very condensed, but it has, it has the potential to be printed as big as that. So that's I mean, like life size. This is like 50 by 63. Yeah. So it's almost like, so, you know, a theater backdrop that you're creating. Kind of. Uh, I also have a background in theater, you know, so I, I started as a theater major when I moved to California. But for the longest time, I never like sell it as a point of uh my specialness you know because i i was just always confused you know i don't know should i bring this up should i say that i also have a theater background but in my work it is reflected the kind of training that i have like in theater the produced pieces like the set pieces are as important as the impulse of the actor in that very moment so that marriage between the hefty uh, pre-produced uh, materials is as important as to what the subject is doing in my photographs. So I really embrace all of that and really make the camera this almighty container of not just my talent, but also my fears, my anxieties, my happiness, and my dreams, you know? Correct me if this is a bit of a leap, but, you know, your personal history seems to come into play here because you grew up a uh, Chinese ethnic minority in Indonesia, also, you know, queer uh, in a largely Muslim country. Is that, you know, is that somehow related or is that sensibility that I'm feeling uh, related to your personal history in any way? Yeah, you know, like it's my power. It's my source of strength. Even just you laying it all out like that, like a queer from a Buddhist family in Indonesia, which is a Muslim majority and having to move to America. It already sounds like, oh, you have a tough life. I did have a tough life, but now I'm here and I'm gonna use that to my benefit. 
I'm going to cash in on my suffering. You know, that's, that's essentially what it is. Like I have experienced that depression and oppression and also suppression being in that place of smallness because I'm just confused. I don't know who to listen to. I don't know if I should live my life in an Islam way or in a Buddhist way or in a Christian way, in an American way, Asian way, Indonesian way, Chinese way. I am so confused. But with that faith I have in myself and wanting to figure out, okay, one day all of these confusions need to be answered. I set out to do that with my life. And I found that art making is the best way to address, but also to process all of those things. Refusing to let a situation get the upper hand over who you are, how you feel. You know, it feels like um, you sort of raged against the situation, against the white walls, against confinement by going all in and sort of um, creating your own you know, your own universe uh, in which you've, at, it feels at least to me, like these images are, are cheerful, they're loving, and they, they have a sense of homeliness and safety mm -hmm. um, that we're not really experiencing at the moment. I need to remind myself of my own power, you know, like making art, I can do. Whatever you see in the frame, I put it in the frame. I spend my energy putting that in the frame. And when I do so, I feel like I am in control of my life. And in a sense, that is such an important distraction that I really need because it allows me to process big questions like trauma, like the uncertainties of the pandemic into something that I can handle. So if I set the camera down and then I have however long, however many days to go back and forth, thinking about what to include in the frame, what to get rid of, what color to put in, what pattern to put in. I feel in charge, I feel in power when applied to, you know, the discrimination that is going on. I feel like this is also my way of fighting that because this is truly what I am good at doing. I can't cook to save my life that I learned in quarantine. <laughs> so what I'm good at with my life, I want to keep doing and hopefully I can share this and create that spark in other people so that they can find what they're good at doing and then we can do this world together. All I can do is Thank you for, you know, being part of Foam Talent, going through a journey together uh, this year. Um, yeah, we're very happy that you want to work with us. And, uh, and of course, that you made the time to talk to us about your work. All right, we'll let you Thank go. You. Bye. Thanks, man. Bye. Thank you. Bye.